everyone, we're back here with another code example and to walk you through the code so that you can understand this problem better and apply it to your code and to any tests or quizzes or problems you may have in the future. Right now, I have two for loops. I have one for loop nested within an outer for loop. The outer for loop declares x to be 1, and as long as x is less than or equal to 5, increment x. The inner for loop has a variable declared of y, sets equal to 1, and then sets the conditional as, as long as y is less than or equal to x, increment y. So, this is very interesting. Now, let's walk through the code, and before we run it, let's make sure we can write down the input or the output rather my bad by ourselves so that it shows that we under this understand the code as humans or as people writing it now I am going to simply start again at the top of my main method I'm gonna go down to line 7 I'm gonna say okay X is declared to 1 then I'm gonna go into this loop I'm gonna go into my loop so then I go into the next loop I said y equal to 1 and say okay so now I've reached this, my inner loop, okay? So now I print out x, so I'm going to print out 1. Then I simply, re I've reached the end of my inner loop, so then I go back up to y, I increment y++, plus plus. so then y is now 2, and then I do my conditional. Is 2 less than or equal to x, which is 1? No, it is not. That breaks the conditional. 2 is greater than 1. So I break out of this inner loop and go back up, hit this brace, and then go back up here to my conditional to the x variable or the outer loop. I increment x. x is less than or equal to 5, so then I go back down. So y is now 2, and then I say, is 2 less than or greater to x? Well, well, sorry. I made a mistake there. When I get back into my inner loop, after setting x equal to 2, y, my, this inner loop is started over, is, is restarted, so y is set back to 1. So is 1 less than or equal to 2? Yes, it is. So I print out 2, then I go back, I increment y, and then I see that 2 is less than or equal to 2. Specifically, it's equal to 2. So that condition still holds, so then I print out 2 again. So, so far, our output, our output is 1, 2, 2. Then I'm done with this loop because I increment it to 3, and that breaks the conditional. And I go back out to my outer loop. X is now 3. I hope you see the pattern here. So, X is now 3. I enter my loop back again, and since I'm re-entering the loop after it's terminated y is now back to being 1. So then I'm going to print out the value of x. How many times am I going to print the value of x? I'm going to print it out three times. And I'm going to print it out again four times. I'm not going to belabor you, but you can keep going through it. And then on the when I x finally hits 5, it goes through it one more time. And then I print out 5, 5 times. And then finally, when I exit out of my inner loop, increment x to 6, that breaks the conditional. And then my code finally stops, okay? And so when, when I run this code, you can see that I get 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5. So we print out each number, we print out, you know, the nth number, n number of times. So we print out 1 once, 2 twice, 3 thrice, 4, 4 times, and 5, 5 quintuple times, okay? So it's important to understand this code and important to understand for loops just so you can understand interview questions and how to navigate them successfully. Have a great day guys!